Hi, uh, welcome to today's session, Leveraging Rancher K3S for Edge Development. Uh, my name is Samit Parikh. Uh, I'm a software solutions architect with SUSE. Uh, we're going to be going through a variety of uh, topics uh, related to the edge, um, CICD for edge deployment, um, why the agile process is uh, important for this, how to use K3S, um, and then uh, going through an example to show you uh, a build process and automated deployments uh, for K3S at the edge. So before we begin, I uh, want to take a little bit of time to just define what the edge uh, means. Um, um, and, and so to put this into some context, uh, cloud computing um, is, is really just the beginning and, and sort of the entree into edge computing. Um, and as much as uh, cloud uh, and, and general virtualization has grown over the last uh, several years, um, the predict predictions for edge computing um, in the next few years is that it'll be similar, if not greater than that rise. Um, and, and it's easy to see how this is possible as we see a variety of distributed systems um, throughout, uh, throughout the world and globally um, and, and cloud technologies, uh, cloud native technologies have really enabled this. And um, we, Kubernetes really is a big part of how this will be um, managing that ecosystem and also driving uh, some of the uh, operations and integrations with technologies. And so defining the edge, uh, some of the things uh, the, of why that this is so powerful is that, you know, we, we talk about the internet of things and these are sensors that are out um, amongst different areas, um, different uh, machine to machine learning type things. Um, and these are all closer to um, kind of the physical world. But what, what, what I think is really important to understand is that all of that data needs to come back and needs to be computed. Um, some of it is um, processed at the end, some of it is processed in the middle, some of it is processed um, in, in uh, different areas of that uh, system. Um, but edge computing really is that paradigm that uh, will will go to uh, create these uh, solve these problems. And so uh, now that we've we've looked at edge, why why agile and why is CICD important? So to kind of set the table for that, um, you know, we look at software delivery cycles in a traditional sense, uh, the uh, kind of waterfall uh, methodologies, um, and this was. Uh, uh, initially defining requirements and then going through um, a long uh, a, a life cycle of fulfilling those requirements. Um, and this could take, you know, on average six months to 18 months to 12 months. Um, and so when you define these business rules and you kind of go and you decide that um, you're creating an entire uh, system, um, you lose the ability to really make changes quickly and uh, adapt to uh, some of those ever-changing business rules. And, um, you know, one of the things that's important is that if you want to make a change um, in traditional methodologies, um, pushing that configuration out, um, that can take a very, very long time in terms of planning, development, testing. Um, and so if we look at different silos that get created, you know, on, on the left, you, you would see business rules that are created. Um, and then developers that are uh, tackling these challenges and then a testing process. And then once it's tested and it seems like it'll be operational, um, how do you actually push this out? And so in any sort of software cycle, that, that is an issue to get things out quickly. But when we're talking about target devices, uh, we really need to consider um, a agile process so that we can push these out very, very quickly. Um, and so cloud native really lends itself uh, to be able to attack these problems very uh, uh, quickly and with some scale. Um, and so you want to be able to uh, uh, test, um, develop, and then push these operational changes out uh, very quickly. Um, and so uh, what, what becomes very important for uh, edge devices in the DevOps world 
is that you're continually going through and having a cycle of feedback and deployment and testing. Um, and so uh, it, when we talk about edge devices, um, that cycle becomes ever more important. Hello, I'm Christophe Ledor. Welcome to CityCon. I'm partner software architect at CZ, working in the Alliance and helping partners reaching their expectation in Edge uh, and Dev, DevOps, DevSecOps. So we are going to talk about CI/CD for Edge. Thanks, Samir, for the introduction. Um, so um, since... Uh, uh, since k 3 s has exploded in terms of popularity, so too has Kubernetes on the edge and organization have adopted an edge deployment model where each device is a single or three node clusters. The point is that we are dealing with a lot of small cluster, not a single large cluster with many nodes. Although pretty much anywhere people are running Linux today, they are looking to use Kubernetes to manage the workloads. So while most Kubernetes uh, K3S edge deployment are less than 10,000 nodes, some will soon get to 1 million. And it's, it's in such architecture that fleet will meet your scale requirements. Um, so build factory for the edge. Uh, despite the latency consideration, building and deploying to the edge is almost the same as building and deploying to the cloud. I mean, it's a similar mechanism. Uh, the use of virtualization is, will be likely to simulate the targeted environment to better implement real tests. Uh, emulator could uh, also help in development, and uh, production push will have a better chance of success uh, uh, this way. Um, an edge build factory. So you all know that CI CD isn't nowadays just about DevOps and CI automation. It's also a lot about GitOps, and it requires an engine able to ease this site reliability engineer job and approach, uh, while um, uh, at the same time facilitating deployment of application at scale. Um, improved build process yield improved quality at all stage. Also, deploy development, QA, production, release. So the next phase uh, in the in the CI/CD um, topic is to build and deploy to test clusters. So this is basically uh, here that we're gonna enter in the in the CD phase, uh, and uh, we're gonna take advantage of existing automation uh, technologies like infrastructure as code uh, could be Terraform for the infrastructure, and we're gonna introduce uh, Fleet as the the continuous delivery uh, management platform. Uh, so we will be able to manage application deployment across uh, all the clusters uh, we have to uh, we have to manage. Could be the test cluster, could also be the production cluster then. And uh, so because it's linked to the to the Git repo, uh, each time we're gonna make a commit, uh, the source control will trig um, and, uh, a refresh uh, on Fleet on the Fleet Git repo. And so it's going to trig uh, another application deployment on the cluster. So, what does it permit? Um, so the CD, the CI CD, and uh, for the edge permits you, by the way, to just leverage a technology and the mechanism you had uh, acquired uh, with the with the cloud approach. And so once we have deployed on test, uh, dev, quad, production, make acceptance test and all, we'll be able to using fleet and a different group of cluster to deploy to the production cluster this way. So let's make some demo. So let's go to, into the demo. So we're gonna import a deployed K3S uh, into Rancher. Uh, configure the group of k 3 s into continuous delivery fleet as a new cluster group, uh, put it in the cluster group, and then map it with the, the, the Git repo we're going to use for this demo, and then uh, deploy the demo application from Git. So for the demo, we have uh, k 3 s running on a transactional operating system, which is Slimicro. And uh, we also going to use uh, so K3S running on the Raspberry Pi, and we also going to use um, a very uh, tiny uh, 
edge device, uh, which is a M5 uh, stick C, uh, which would be your MQTT publisher. And uh, the Raspberry Pi is going to be your MQTT broker running Mosquito. And uh, so first of all, let's upload the code to our M5 stick. It should be done so that I can start it. Yes, should be fine. Yep, it's done. So what does it does? Uh, so this uh, this sensor uh, basically just uh, publish uh, three different topic MQTT topic. That's the uh, environment sensor. So it's going to take a measure on humidity, temperature, pressure, and uh, publish this basically to the 102. So we're going to change this so that it's the address of the broker, which is 134. And we're gonna rerun and upload the code, which is done. So currently, uh, the MQTT uh, sensor here, publisher, it's sending uh, the, the three different topic to our Raspberry Pi running on um, 100, 100, 100, 134. Uh, this Raspberry Pi uh, is running K3S, and this K3S has been. Um, has been uh, onboard into our rancher instance. So we have multiple cluster. One of them is the SUSCON demo MQTT and it's running on single node. Okay. Inside this uh, rancher, it's uh, here that we are going to configure inside fleet the continuous delivery. So we have clusters, one of them is our SUSCON demo MQTT. So we have created this cluster. It's a namespace fleet default. You can change the namespace. You can change also the environment and the, the label uh, here that I use, environment in production, so that when you, you can match existing cluster this way. When here you're going to create a cluster group you're going to group clusters using um, this cluster selector so we have set uh, an environment key uh, named env and the value prod so if we look for ex uh, equal environment equal production it matches one of the four existing cluster which is the suscon demo mqtt which is our K3S running uh, on a single uh, single node uh, Raspberry Pi. And all of this makes sense into our CD topic because here it's the place where we're going to create basically a continuous delivery of an application. This application, it's in this uh, repository URL we're going to talk about. That's the branch I'm using. Take care, uh, careful, be careful. By default, it's master, not main. And then you just select the cluster you want to be you want to deploy on. So we have multiple cluster, and we choose simply uh, the group interesting for us, which is our single node production uh, cluster. So that's all. So what do we have in this uh, repository? That's a simple Git repo made for the occasion. It's a, a simple fork of the the Mosquito uh, broker, uh, the, the Mosquito hand chart. So we have the, the the charts, and we have the, the value file. So and uh, so that's the code. Once we get, we'll do any modification here. Uh, Fleet is gonna check, uh, be informed that uh, we'll have the trigger that something happened, and we'll pull the the the, the new version and deploy the new version on our cluster. So how are we going to ensure that MQTT is well using our um, uh, MQ, um, MQT, our Mosquito broker on the Raspberry Pi? On the Raspberry Pi, is also running um, uh, a Node-RED, which is uh, an easy way to have a MQTT publisher and MQTT subscriber. 
So here we're going to use the subscriber so that we can subscribe to the topics that is going to be sent by the broker, uh, which is the target of our sensor, remember? And uh, we're going to display what's inside uh, the, 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 the different topic gathered, uh, published. We're going to um, display them through the debug console, basically using this uh, debug payload. This debug payload, uh, um, so let's see if everything is correct. It seems to be correct here. Okay, so we don't have nothing coming so far. So we know that this one is publishing the value. We know that this one is displaying what's coming in the queue, but it stayed disconnected. So we're going to change a bit our values here. Check if everything is fine. And deploy. Yes, so the MQTT port, it's 1883, which was the default. I just changed so that we have an example of some commit to do. And once, so let's have a a view on uh, so we have uh, different container running and uh, we're gonna we're gonna commit the change and uh, take a look at what's happening so on the git repo here we should soon see something changing here in the uh, in the mosquito demo and also there meanwhile let's see if nothing's coming so far and uh, so the application is uh, is currently deployed made and we saw that the container just changed uh, so the resources are being redeployed yes three container on five and done so all the containers running smoothly and we have our subscriber now able to connect and the temperature coming from the, the sensor is also displayed through the debug console. So that's it for the demo. Thanks for watching and uh, have a great time watching uh, Suscon presentations. Thanks for uh, watching our session and uh, please reach out with any questions and uh, enjoy your time at Suscon.